Good morning and welcome to Online Worship at Davidsville United Methodist Church. This week we continue our Lenten sermon series as we gather around the Lord's table to celebrate communion together this week and to continue to dive deeper into the Lord's Prayer. Yes, and 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 One day, a lawyer told an attorney friend, and yes, I know I'm picking on the legal profession, I'm sorry, but one day, a lawyer told his attorney friend, guess what? I'm starting to teach Sunday school at my church. Wow, said his friend, I didn't know you were ready for that? And then he challenged, I bet you five bucks that you don't even know the words to the Lord's Prayer. Of course I do, said the lawyer, and he began, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Astonished, the attorney opened his wallet, pulled out five bucks, gave it to the lawyer and said, I can't believe you actually knew it. That joke is funny because we know the difference between the Lord's Prayer and this friendly children's bedtime prayer. Many of us know the words to the Lord's Prayer by heart, and yet we may not have taken the time to dig deeper and consider the meaning and the power of this prayer that Jesus taught us. So from now until Easter, we're going to be considering each of the six petitions in this prayer and how they shape our lives. On Thursday nights, you're invited to Zoom in to a study group where we will have more time for exploration and questions. If you need to find the link for that, it's in our Wednesday email emails along with the link to a video. Children are learning this prayer too, and so you are welcome to pick up a picture book for them and share it with either your children or your grandchildren. There's one per household. There's also Lenten devotionals available from the office. Last week, we concluded that prayer is meant to shape our lives and through us to shape and change the world. It has been said that prayer is to the soul what breath and breathing is to the body. Sometimes we pray gratitude, simply breathing, thank you. Other times when our hearts are filled with guilt and shame, we pray, forgive me. When we're hurting and when we're afraid, it's help me. And frequently we might offer ourselves to God and pray, use me. In my experience, when we ask for God's help or when we ask God to act in a certain way, the answer is not a miracle. Now, certainly God does miracles, but by definition, miracles are not the ordinary way that God works. In my experience, God's primary way of working is in us and through us um, by empowering us and leading us to take action. Prayer and work, the two go hand in hand. When we pray, we're not only asking God for something, we are tune tuning our hearts to what we pray for, to hear a call to action. We are committing ourselves to working for what we are praying. So, to what are we committing ourselves this week? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Hmm. We live in a democracy, so maybe we have a bit of work to do to unravel this image of kingdom that Jesus was giving us. Now, in Jesus' day, a kingdom or an empire was a geographical region ruled over by a king or emperor. A benevolent king or queen strove to rule with justice and mercy and in a way that served the common good. In return, their authority was recognized. Their rules were followed. People bowed or knelt before them. And Jesus lived, though, in Herod's kingdom under Roman rule. But he preached about a different kind of authority. He preached about God's kingdom. The kingdom starts with the very first story in scripture. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. The entire cosmos is God's kingdom. God is the rightful ruler of all, everyone and everything. In a sense, God's kingdom is already here. And yet we still pray, thy kingdom come. Why? Because God created human beings and he put them in his wonderful garden in order to farm and care for it. And he gave them everything they needed to thrive and he had just one thing. He asked them to refrain from eating from the tree of knowledge. The fruit of that tree was off limits because it was destructive. Now, you tell a toddler to don't and you draw their attention to the very thing they shouldn't do, and suddenly they need to go there and do that. Much of the rest of the Bible are stories for the many ways that humans make a mess of things. We can choose to follow God's plan for the kingdom. We can pursue that which brings life and fulfillment, or we can do our own thing and chase after the things that take away life and ultimately bring pain. This choice is central to Jesus' ministry. His teaching, life, death, and resurrection focus on announcing God's kingdom, inviting people to be part of it, and encouraging people to not only to pray, but to live in such a way that the fullness of God's kingdom begins to be experienced on earth as in heaven. Adam Hamilton, who wrote our study guide for Lent, notes, God's invisible realm where his will is done, it was breaking in to our visible world as Jesus preached and ministered. Jesus didn't just announce God's heavenly kingdom was drawing near, he embodied it. He healed the sick, forgave the sinners, fed the hungry, and raised the dead. He gave us a glimpse of heaven on earth. We have many scriptures that give us a glimpse of God's peaceable kingdom. The great prophet Isaiah Imagine the world in which the natural enemies lay down safely beside each other, the wolf beside the lamb, the leopard beside the goat. There would be no harm or destruction anywhere, and everyone would truly know God. Micah spoke of the kingdom as a place where weapons of war were turned into farming tools and nations knew war no more. The author of the last book of the Bible, Revelation, offers his vision of God's kingdom. He wrote, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former had passed away. I heard a voice from the throne say, God's home is with humankind. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God will wipe away every tear 
mourning and crying and pain will be no more. Then the one seated, seated on the throne said, look, I am making all things new. In each of these texts, we see the world not as it actually is, but as it is supposed to be. Jesus came announcing that the kingdom of heaven had come near. He invited us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Our prayer isn't about the end of the world as we know it, but rather that we might glimpse God's kingdom now, see it and participate in the breaking in of God's kingdom. As Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said in his final sermon in Memphis, it is all right to talk about the long white robes over yonder in all of its symbolism, but ultimately people want some suits and dresses and shoes to wear down here. It's all right to talk about the streets flowing with milk and honey, but God has commanded us to be concerned about the slums down here. Concerned about his children who can't get three square meals a day. It's all right to talk about a new Jerusalem, but one day God's preacher must talk about the new New York, the new Atlanta, the new Memphis, the new Davidsonville. In a world focused on me and mine, Jesus taught us to pray thee and thine, to face those moments of decision and make an intentional choice to submit to God's will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And it's not easy. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul wrote, the desire to do good is inside of me, but I can't seem to do it. I don't do the good I want to do, but instead I do the evil I do not want to do. It's a struggle. And that's why we need the Lord's Prayer. Remember, when we pray, we are fixing our attention on what we pray. We are training our hearts to think less about ourselves and what we want and building up our little kingdoms. We are yielding our lives to God's will. Let me say that again. We are yielding our lives to God's will. Let's take a moment to reflect on what that means. What is God's will? Sometimes when horrible things happen, we go to comfort other people and we say everything happens for a reason. It must have been God's will. But believing that whatever happens is all God's will makes God responsible for all of the suffering and pain. It leads to a kind of fatalism. Whatever will be, will be. God will do what God will do. We can't change it, so we just resign ourselves to accepting our fates. Well, there are scriptures that can be interpreted to support these statements. There are many more scriptures that point to the fact that God's will is not being done here on earth. In fact, when we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, it's because God's will isn't being done. We can see that it isn't being done on earth as it is in heaven. When Jesus stopped to talk to people who were sick or who were suffering, in grief, who were despondent, he didn't say, I'm sorry, I can't help you because your sickness, your tragedy, your pain is the will of God. No. He assumed that their condition was not the will of God, and he set out immediately to begin to rectify it, to change it, to make it right. Suffering and tragedy are just part of life. Our bodies are susceptible to illness. We sin. We hurt ourselves. We hurt each other. We live in a mortal, fragile, temporary world where... Fairness or fair isn't a word that often applies. And, and God walks with us each and every day. God wants to be with us. God wants to help us through the highs 
and the lows. When we pray, thy will be done on earth, we are praying, here I am, Lord, use me. There's a big difference between resigning ourselves to our fate, basically giving up, and yielding our will to God's kingdom plan or actively giving ourselves to God to be used in the world. This Wednesday, I participated in two meetings and caught a glimpse of God's kingdom breaking into our world. The first meeting was with just a few parents of our young ones. We were exploring the idea of hiring a pastor that would care for children, youth, and their families. God has blessed us with so many children lately, and these parents could envision our congregation helping each of these little ones grow in their faith, grow into solid adults who loved God. They were passionate. These women were passionate about the care of children, not just their child. And they could see what God's kingdom would look like if we just had someone who was, could help with the communication and the organization. You know, I could really feel the spirit in that room that night, and I left hoping that our whole congregation could catch this vision of health and growth. The second meeting was with Grief Share. It's a small team of volunteers have, have began working a couple of years ago to pray and to listen for God's next steps for our congregation. And so they went out and listened to the people of our community and they held surveys and they crunched statistics and they prayed. They prayed. They prayed. And they heard God's call to take care of those in grief. For the past year, they have been experimenting, ex evaluating, exploring, and experimenting again. On Wednesday, I saw the fruit of their labor as they ministered with those in our community who are suffering so much. I glimpsed God's love at work. I witnessed a little bit of heaven on earth. Both of these group groups are working to close the gaps between the way the world is and the way it is supposed to be. Now we're just two weeks into our sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. By now we're just beginning to understand the power of this prayer to give us a vision to strive towards and a call to action for our lives. Each of us has a part to play in the coming of God's kingdom and the doing of God's will. May we continue to work together to close the gap in our community. Whenever I come to this line in Jesus' prayer, I stop and think, me and mine or thee and thine? Lord, I am yours. Use me. Use me to close the gap between what is and what could be in my community. That God's kingdom may come and God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May we continue to pray the words that Jesus taught us each and every day, beginning right now. We welcome you today to this table and this holy meal. We hope that you've had a chance to come by our church office and pick up elements to be used in this communion as we celebrate together. But in case you didn't, take a minute now and go to your kitchen and find something that can serve you as the body and blood of Christ. Let us remember those in need. Here in the arms of our Father who loves us so intensely, let us remember the needs of our world. It's places of power that are in need of God's wisdom and humility. 
its people longing for his lessons of understanding and trust. Compassionate Holy Father, our dependence on you is complete. Our need of you is constant. In our prayers, we remember this and know that you remember us. We trust you and thank you. Amen. We come together around this table of memories. It is not that we deserve to be here. This is not a right to be earned or a reward to be achieved. This is a gift given to us by a loving, compassionate, and generous God. It was at a table just like this that Jesus shared his last meal with his followers. And so we lift bread as he did, and we break it as he did, and we share it, remembering his words, this is my body, broken for you, eat and remember me. We also lift this cup as he did. And we share in remembering his words, my blood flows for you, drink and remember me. Here and now, we are one in this memory in this meal, one loaf, one cup, one Lord laying down his life for us. Teach us, Lord, to follow your will to be people of open hearts and open minds and open doors so that you can work through us to draw all of creation back to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. You may now eat and drink and remember.
Thank you so much for joining us this week and join us again next week as we continue to dive deeper into the Lord's Prayer.